Hello. Hey, how's it going? Good. How about you? Good. Yeah. Wait, is Kenner here too? Yeah, I ha he hasn't that, talked huh? any yet. I asked, I was like, hey, brother, somebody's just sitting there, all quiet. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> just connecting. Ah, okay. Come on, star. How's life? Okay, no man. Okay, no. man. Okay, no man. Oh. School's going well. Yeah. First semester down. First semester down. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Yeah. Uh, do you have like uh, plans for school, like major Here stuff you. yet, or not yet? I mean, you're yeah, I've, back. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna be majoring in psychology. That's my major right now. And so I'm majoring in psychology, and then I have a. Uh, I'm gonna have a minor in <laughs> a minor in business. So that's the plan for now. Cool. Cool. Kristen! <laughs> hey! Hello! How are you? I'm good, how about you? Doing well. <laughs> First off, it's super weird to hear you guys just speak English. It's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> that was the goal way back when, right? Yeah, yeah, it definitely was. <laughs> Kenner, you look just glowing today. Yeah, you look great. <laughs> 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 it's been forever. I don't think I've seen you since like, like 2018. <laughs> yeah, long time, very long no. time. Was that 2018? I think so. <laughs> Hi, Kenner. Hello. How are you? It was good. Yeah. You? Good. Yeah. <laughs> First names are also weird, just just putting that out there. <laughs> yeah. There we go. <laughs> so, Brother yeah. Shumway, you haven't been in the MTC since 2018? Yeah. It was the very end of 2018. Okay. Yeah. It was like December. So it was like exactly two years ago. Oh, cool. Yeah. Right? I think so. Yep. Just so, over two. Yeah. So what have you all have you been up to? Who's going first? <laughs> you. <laughs> I volunteered. Hey, there he is. Brother Mariano. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Everybody's Come here. Star. Okay, Lanco, y como ya. Easy. Okay, I bet, let's do this thing. I bet it's like it's cool to see like each other than, than it is also see kind of one of your guys' like students as well. <laughs> Sweet man. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Alright, so um I I just uh, just to give you kind of brief like what am I doing? I just have this podcast where I'm kind of going back through all my mission uh, emails because my dad he 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 like kept all of them and like made it into like a book and I just kind of I'm going through it and reading through it and I just got to the end of my MTC experience so I thought it'd be really cool to like get your guys's input as well so before I move on to the actual mission field so yeah before we get started though what are you guys all up to I know with Mariano you're kind of doing other things with the church. But other than that, I don't really know what everyone else is doing. I'm done with the church. You're just done. <laughs> oh, you're out of there. man <laughs> 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 Well, like a bug. Oh. oh yeah, Izzy, you go first. Wait, who? You. Ikal. Oh, so I mean, um, most of you know, except Kenner actually. So I, I started interning for the church travel department specifically like visas i'm helping process visas um for missionaries and so it's kind of going crazy right now with the whole COVID situation so um I was in idaho back i'm now back in utah so a little background on me awesome all right what about sister reed uh so I graduated in April and I moved back home to San Diego because I'm in grad school Woo! studying creative writing. Uh, and I just got a new job. I work at a biotech company uh, doing like DNA sequencing. Wow. <laughs> Moving up in the world, eh? <laughs> yeah. It's a real job. Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. 
Okay, brother Addison, what and are you up to? She didn't tell you. She didn't tell you, but like she had like a bajillion labs calling her. Like they all want Christine. Oh, Blake, okay. So. All right. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. So me, I am the lone wolf still here in Provo. Um, so <laughs> nice. I, I'm still here. Um, I, I actually, Izzy, Kristen, and I all graduated together in April. So oh, I that's awesome. In April, finished my. I, I, my degree is in music, right? But I just started my grad program as well, so I, I've, I'm in grad school right now. Um, I am studying linguistics, though, so I'm oh, kind cool. of changed course a little bit there. So, and that's been a lot of fun. So I'm <laughs> doing that. I am also still at the MTC. Believe oh, it you or are. Not. So, nice. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, just for a couple more weeks, actually, I'm uh, have two more weeks left, and then I'm gone. But oh, okay. Um. So I'm, uh, what, what I'm, are you doing I'm the training you? supervisor. Yeah. So I, I, I hire and train teachers now and I've been Whoa. doing that for the last two years. So you're also moving up in the world. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> moving up and moving out, I guess. <laughs> uh, like I said, I'm, I'm only have two weeks left and then I'm right, um, right. I'll be done. So, so. That's awesome though. Yeah. Thanks. All right, brother Shumway, your turn. All right, so I guess I'll start with when I left the MTC because that's the last time you guys, I talked to most of you guys. But the reason I left was because my wife and I moved back to Hawaii to go to BYU Hawaii because that's where she had started school before we got married. Um, and to help her finish, we went back so she could finish her program. I just transferred all of my credits. Um, we also graduated in April. Um, I graduated wow. in in math um nerd <laughs> the biotech <laughs> yeah it says the biotech <laughs> so yeah so when covid happened we didn't want to get stuck in hawaii because we didn't know what was going to happen so we dipped out or dipped out in march and just finished the semester remotely from her home in colorado which is where we now live um, we decided we wanted to stay there, so we bought a house, and I teach mid or high school math. Wow! Yeah, I'm nice. Mr. Shumway instead of. Oh, Dave. sorry, Mr. Shumway now, <laughs> Mr. Shumway. <laughs> yeah, so I, awesome. this is my first year teaching. Just started back in August, but yeah, that's where I'm at. Nice. That's so awesome. awesome. It's fun. It's weird. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's weird. It's hard enough being a teacher, but adding COVID on top of that, it actually yeah. makes it easier because I can blame more on COVID instead of me. <laughs> yeah. Because you know, yeah. what even is accountability? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, that's awesome. It's super good to hear from all you guys. Like, I remember you guys are a huge influence on me throughout my life, like, or especially my MTC life. Just like I was like looking back. So it's really cool to see like what you guys are up to nowadays, and to see you guys are keep moving forward, keep improving, and getting better. So yeah, it's really inspiring to hear you guys is where you guys are at right now. So that's awesome. Yeah. Well, what about you? You have to tell us what you're doing. Yeah. So I got home in March, and luckily for me, I didn't get sent home. I was actually able to stay my whole two years and my parents came for an extra week and we went to Barakai and we kind of just went to all my areas just kind of had some fun and we got home I had my homecoming and then literally the next week after that was when COVID was like nope okay all churches are closed everything so I was pretty darn lucky honestly <laughs> with how the timing of me coming home but obviously that changed a bunch of my plans uh, and it didn't have a lot of plans going in into it so I was like okay well I guess I'm just doing whatever, so I ended up getting kind of an old, like the same job field, same job field I had before my mission. Started working at a machine shop, and then I just saved up money until I moved to Orm to go to school. So I started out just as um, just doing generals, but decided to go into psychology, and hopefully I'll become a therapist to help more people out. So that's kind of my plan, and also a minor in business, maybe make it into a business. So that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> awesome. Cool. And I have no girlfriend. I'm single, so just to get that out of the way, so I know that question's gonna come up sometime. So I'll just get that out of the way. <laughs> oh yeah, really? Okay, I believe I believe each and every one of you. Yep. <laughs> I just do it to be nice. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. We all claim Kenner's wife is our significant other, so. <laughs> really? <laughs> Shout out to Tita Brinley. <laughs> yep. Oh, that's so funny. Oh man. But yeah, so I guess just kind of like lighten the mood up with that things. Like, what are your some of your, like the funny experiences that you guys remember from our batch specifically? If you if you can remember, no, you probably taught a million batches, but <laughs> what are some yeah. of the funny ones? I remember one. I remember one. So I'll go first while everyone else okay. can think. Was it um, the Pato? <laughs> 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 Okay, so, so I guess you guys can help me out because I honestly don't remember what was going on, why it happened, but I think one of the markers died or something, like a whiteboard marker. <laughs> something happened where I don't even remember who it was. It wasn't me, I think. Was it you, Izzy, at the board? I don't think so. I think it was, well, I don't know. Kristen was definitely there, right? I was definitely okay. there. And I yeah. caught it first, and I laughed so hard. <laughs> I just didn't get it. Maybe it was maybe it was me, but like, <laughs> so let's just say it was me. For okay. The heck of it. So whiteboard marker runs out of ink. You know, it's like trash. I'm go to throw it away. I throw it at the garbage can. You know, and it, it probably made it because let's be honest, this is me. Yeah, obviously. Um, <laughs> and, but as I throw it, Elder Elliot like shouts. He's like, Pato. <laughs> And I was so confused. And then all of a sudden, Kristen just starts laughing. And I was like, what the heck? And she's like, Pato. And I'm like, duck. Oh, duck. Right? Like, anyways, that was uh, any, any additional. What did I miss? Oh, man. Just, yeah, that was one yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> we oh. talked about that one then. I could have sworn that we were like, playing some kind of vocabulary game or something. It probably was, honestly. And so that's why I was, like, not only, like, intensely amused, but I was, like, genuinely <laughs> impressed that Elder Elliot had been, like, studying his animal vocab. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't remember uh, the situation, but I just remember that. that what that's so funny. I totally <laughs> forgot about that. That is hilarious. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, Weston, was this was this a batch with you, Elliot, and Dunn? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just you three? It was just us three. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, hold on. <laughs> there was a lot that happened. Let me think about this. <laughs> no. And like it's hard enough to remember anything in the MTC. Right, right. <laughs> two years ago. Yeah, <laughs> One This isn't like a specific memory, but I just feel like my general perception of your district was like there was just these like two bookends of like <laughs> elder elliot stone-faced like wouldn't emote like just very uh, what do i have to do right and then elder son who was just bouncing off the walls crazy and and we as teachers were just like in awe of you elder young <laughs> And I, I, we were just like, he has to be in the middle of that all the time. Like, yep. <laughs> and we were so, like, talented, you know? Yeah. You, you, were, you were serious and you were, like, spiritual and all this stuff, but you also, like, had fun. And yeah. that was just a very funny dynamic to watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's for sure. And, like, the point you mentioned, like, how it was very, it was must have been hard because, like, you know, very serious, very jump, like, off the walls that all kind of came to a head when we came when we had like companionship inventory and i don't know if you guys remember that was like four hours long of us just doing cop inventory and you guys checked on us like four times like are you guys okay like everything went all right <laughs> and we're like yeah we're doing great like we're just we're just hashing out it's great <laughs> But yeah, in that meeting, they're like, they're like, yeah, you're kind of like the dad of the group, but Elder Young, you're kind of like the leader, <laughs> you're like lead us to victory. <laughs> it's so funny. But yeah, it, I just remember that specifically, just like taking hours and hours on on cop inventory, and then finally you guys were like, all right, you guys need to be done. Like, geez, this is we're taking way too long. We've already missed this and this class and this lecture. Like, come on, guys. <laughs> but it was well needed. It was well needed. <laughs> kind of funny. Yeah, the other funny experience I remember was, I don't remember who it was, but it was Sister Reed for sure, 
and then I think it was Brother Adamson and Brother Mariano. You guys were all like doing like breaking up three different groups or something. I don't remember what it was. But you're all writing on the board. And then I remember like looking at the board. And I was I like, Sino <laughs> <laughs> Because I literally, that was you. Yeah, I said that. But then I blamed on Elder Elder. And I was like, And he's like, What in the? It was so funny. And I just remember because oh it was just like, I literally, I had no idea. That. I was like, Wait, wait, hold on. I just remember Sister Reed's reaction. Yeah. And she was like, and I was like, no, Elder Elder did it. It was him. Wow, I, I didn't know that you said it. I know, because I blamed on him. <laughs> That's why. Uh, I just remember that was like one of the funniest moments in MTC, honestly. It was, it was great. It was a good moment. <laughs> so hurt. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, your handwriting's <laughs> probably great now. It's been a couple of years, you know. It's, it's probably great. <laughs> oh, man. The other one I remember was when we learned that Mother Mariano was actually our teacher. That was like a, wait, what? <laughs> that was crazy. Because we literally, after that lesson, we were like debating, like, wait, is he our teacher? Is he an actually an investigator? Like, what is he? We don't know. This is weird. What's going on? And then he walks in with a name badge. We're just like, oh, gosh, he is our teacher. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like, on, on that topic of teaching, though, how, how was it, like, being taught by us or just any missions in general? Like, how was that kind of experience, like, trying to, like, reenact an, as someone that you taught on your mission and reenact the, their personalities, reenact, like, how they would react, but not keeping a composure as well? Yeah, so, um, I guess since I was the first investigator, I can <laughs> kind of try something hard. But um, it's weird. When I first started teaching, I thought... I had to act like the person that I was uh, portraying. Yeah. Um, but you know, as teachers, we learned later on that it really wasn't about that. It was about what would help the missionaries fulfill their purpose. Um, so yes, I was acting, you know, like one of the people I've taught, but the main point was definitely, um, you know, not to, help you have like a, a great lesson but it was more of how to um, help you feel successful in your purpose as a missionary because we don't we didn't we didn't want to get you down in your first week already and we wanted to come across as you know this is hard but you know you're not doing it alone so yeah yeah, yeah. That's a that was like a perfect answer. Look at you go. <laughs> uh, um, I will say, on like the less uh, spiritual side, there were times where it was hard. Like, I mean, <laughs> you know, for different reasons, right? Like sometimes you have missionaries who just tell like hadn't prepared, and so it's mm -hmm. like I don't. I can't help you feel successful because I don't want you to because <laughs> you don't do, you know? Yeah. Um, or there were other times where, like, you know, just the one wrong vocabulary or grammar to, like, totally change the meaning of a sentence. Like, even though <laughs> I know exactly what you meant, the meaning is just too funny not to relate to. Yeah. Um, I don't have any, like, specific examples, obviously, but they're laughing, so they know what I mean. <laughs> um, yeah it was fun though and and truly like best part of being a teacher at times um because the really good lessons were really really good and it was like oh my gosh i am with representatives of jesus christ and they're helping you know so, yeah free yeah. mm -hmm. therapy yeah <laughs> that's awesome what about for you brother shumway because we taught you as well in mtc <clears throat> Yeah. Um, the thing for me is that my favorite thing seeing being taught is how the companionship grows in their, like the unspoken communication that companionships have, mm -hmm. you know, like when it starts off, it's like an, uh, very noticeable, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else yes, yes. So like, this is the only thing I memorized, although you got to take it from here. <laughs> yep. 
Um, and then like, you know, seeing like as it goes on, elders and even those who like, who feel more confident and ones who kind of like demand a little more attention during the lessons started to see them like feel the flow and like, you know, hold back when they know that their companion is trying to say something and not just swooping in, which is a tendency of newer missionaries. But it's just so cool to see, you know, that slowly develop over time, you know, where you can tell, especially when they've prepared and they know like, oh, as soon as this elder's, you know, saying, wrapping this section up, like it's my turn to like, you know, yeah hit him with the question or the next section or whatever it was that they had planned it's just it was so cool to see that progression in any group of missionaries yeah that's awesome and brother adamson we didn't really teach you but i remember there was one lesson that you were a member helping helping us on the lesson <laughs> it was kind of honestly yeah. it was kind of frustrating though because you were, like we didn't know how to communicate very well yet and so we're like trying to get you to help but like you're like oh uh, yeah okay i got it and like no not yet and we're like just but yeah anyways how is that how is that experience like kind of joining in on the lesson but not being the one being taught how how's that experience as well um yeah well i don't know going back to what izzy was talking about I just think everything that we were doing is we were just trying to help you, right? But also sometimes helping you is different than teaching with you sometimes, right? And so in those moments, I, and the other teachers have had done it too, right? And so you can, you all can add too, but um, when you're sitting there in the lesson as the member present or whatever you want, you want to call it, um, what goes through my mind usually is where's the balance here where I can participate and be helpful and also maybe give you an experience of teaching with a member, right, who probably does know the language better than you, you know, or or whatever it is, but also where it's not going to be that I'm just jumping in to rescue you because you you just start learning, you know, and, and haven't had these experiences because that's what you have to do you have to have the experience or else you'll just get to the field and it will you'll have that experience then so why not in the mtc right right um, and, and do it here before you go out so that that's kind of what that experience is what was for me there's i guarantee there were times where i knew you were trying to have me say something but i was just not responding so. <laughs> yep yep <laughs> i i probably noticed that too honestly <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. But yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's all like honestly amazing responses. And especially I love Brother Mariano's response. It just like, I don't know, the way you responded just brought me all the memories back of Brother Mariano's wisdom coming at us. <laughs> because like there are so many moments where like Brother Mariano would be so like happy and just like joking around and all of a sudden he'd be like, all right, guys, <laughs> like, bring on the wisdom. And it was just amazing. It, it was amazing how you could flip that switch so well. And honestly, like I the the one thing I remember was just like having those one-on-ones with everyone and it was just that was so amazing to have because of our, how our batch was sized obviously there's only three of us so we always we could have like that one-on-one and I was always stoked whenever brother Arnie was like all right Wes or right, other young like it's your turn me and you let's go and I'm like all right let's do this <laughs> it's awesome but yeah each and every one of you though there was moments especially with like sister Reed when we had like one-on-one talks it's just like how things go and like I just remember those one-on-one -on -one talks were like, well, the, that was the, like what was keeping me together, honestly. It was awesome. Like, it was like really helpful. And so I really appreciate everything that you all, you guys did. Um, but another question I had was like, especially for uh, the three that are, that were still at the MTC for a while was um, a after we left, and I guess before we left, what were like the differences you saw like with like bigger batches or like carrying on into like COVID? Like what were the, some of the differences you've noticed like in your teaching or just in the MTC in general that kind of happened, took place? Don't all jump in at once. I'll say, cause I feel like, and, and I think Kenner was there just as long as I was pretty much. Um, like difference between smaller batches and big batches. Um, it's interesting because I feel like a common emotion or feeling that we had was with each batch is that missionaries were just getting like better and better, um, which was independent of the size of, of their districts or how many districts we had. Um, but like obviously, like you were saying, with your district, your teachers outnumbered you. Um, versus, you know, we had some uh, 
uh, batches, I think that next summer where we had three districts at a time with like 12 missionaries each, you know? Um, and so I do think that there was like a huge difference just in how much we got to interact one-on-one, -on -one, obviously. And like you were saying with those one-on-one -on -one interactions, I would, you know, I'm hopeful that that meant that we were able to be more of help to missionaries, but no matter what, I think that it meant we got to know missionaries better, um, you know, just by spending more time and, and getting to know more of what was going on with you. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Medugan <laughs> pa. The COVID, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I can, can I can pick. Oh yeah, no, you go first. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> okay, make I was just gonna say I, I can take the COVID because I'm still here, <laughs> um, at the MTC, um, and I will just say that, I think the four of us will all agree from our time at the MTC that the only thing that was ever constant was change, and, the MTC changed every single district. And whether it was us deciding to change something or the MTC changing policies or curriculum or anything. And I was thinking when, when COVID hit in, you know, March and then the MTC announced a few weeks later that we were going to go online. Um, really, I was just like, you know, what's new, honestly, <laughs> like, there had to be something um, because and I, I looked back in my mental, I don't know, memory and thought through every district that I'd ever taught, both as a teacher and then as a supervisor, um, and could name exactly what the new thing was for each district. And I'm like, okay, well, it's just a new thing that we're doing. Um, so it has been a big change to go online and to do online MTC and to train missionaries in their own homes and then send them to reassignments and continue their training. We, we still do training while they're in their uh, reassignments, um, which is uh, awesome. And there's there's been some amazing innovations that have come um, to both the MTC and missionary work because of COVID and, and the pandemic. Um, but at the same time, um, the work goes forward. Uh, most of us were really skeptical about the online MTC, but um, we're seeing the same results, if not better results, um, as we continue training. Like Kristen said, that every district just keeps getting better regardless of what we, what we do as teachers. It's, it's definitely the Lord's work and He's in it. Um, and online hasn't stopped that. Missionaries are, are getting better at the language and at teaching and, and are doing it in more normal and natural ways that are going to be amazing um, that we see coming up here in the next couple of years as they finish their missions. That's awesome. <clears throat> yeah, I think to, I definitely agree with what has been said because, you know, um, it's cool to see the changes and it's, I think what's really hard and what's really cool about being an MTC teacher was um, you, you can't really become an expert MTC teacher because every district is such a, is a different challenge, um, you know? And I remember like, I'm gonna break an illusion for, of MTC teachers here. I remember when I was, you know, I was being taught by missionaries and honestly, like it was so boring. I was falling asleep. <laughs> like, I think we've all had those moments. <laughs> and missionaries are so awesome. And they put us on a pedestal and they're like, oh yeah, like, he's acting like he's bored so we got to do better like no i was literally just like <laughs> <laughs> and, you know it, it's very interesting um it comes with you know uh it comes with um the push for us to to be better because of how missionaries see mtc teachers um and um even though at first it was just like you know we're 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 teachers nothing else right but i remember I, how i also saw my mtc teachers and so it's cool to bring it kind of internal like inwards right like with every just how districts are becoming better missionaries are becoming better more prepared it's cool for us because we're also becoming better teachers and in addition like you know, better people right so 
That's awesome. <clears throat> Thanks for the input. Uh, going off of like the boring thing, it was funny. There was a couple lessons I remember teaching Brother Shumway where literally he would just could not stop yawning. I felt so bad. I was like, oh, I'm sorry, Brother Shumway. We're not even like to my part yet. Like the other done's going off. Like, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> hopefully this is over soon. <laughs> uh, those lessons were funny though. We would laugh about that later. <laughs> but, that was probably right after like the whole body language lesson. <laughs> yes, probably. <laughs> Uh, it was that was the funniest thing. The MTC is like none of us elders could ever get a read on Brother Oshemwe because like I remember when he came back from he came back from his his uh, honeymoon. And we're like, hey, I was your honeymoon. He's like, it was good. And I'm like, great, that's awesome. <laughs> like it was so hard to read you. But then there was like all those those moments where like you just be like, hey, by the way, this word means this. And we're like. Wait, what? You're telling these these words? Like, Brother Shumway? Like, whoa! <laughs> it was so yeah. funny. What but, were you teaching? I mean, I mean, what? I mean, that was supposed to be on the raps. I'm sorry, Brother Shumway. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, that happened two years ago. It's fair game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So I just want to tell you all you right now. Hold on, I have my notes over here. Just, just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, we always had good moments, and I bet, like, like you said, like you probably have learned and grown as well, like throughout the experiences of MTC. And that's kind of the other question I wanted to ask is like. What was the difference between like being a missionary and being an MTC teacher and like how you learn and and grew as each of those? Good question, right? Am I right? Ooh. Don't be afraid of silence, Weston. <laughs> I'm just gonna turn my mic off right now. Just let you guys talk. <laughs> um I'll go first. I guess um, I so often wish while I was an MTC teacher that um, I could go on a second mission. Like, and I really, I had dreams. I had two dreams that were very different, but in both of them, I got called to go on a second mission to Chile both times. So <laughs> maybe I'm a prophet. Um, just because uh I don't know like obviously it wasn't like I was doing more working at the MTC for like 20 hours a week than I did full-time as a missionary in the Philippines um but honestly I felt uh I mean it was just like dugong a dugong right like it just got more and more for my mission being an MTC teacher and having that sense of responsibility of okay I'm not just responsible for like my mission as a missionary now I am helping multiple missionaries at a time that are going to two different missions. They're going to serve in who knows how many areas with who many, how many people. Um, and so that was just really an extra incentive and like inspiration to, to try and understand the missionary purpose better. And I expected so much more of the missionaries that I taught than I ever expected of myself, um, which, you know, maybe not fair, but also <laughs> it's my job, you know? Um, and, and what was cool to me was that even though I like wanted to go on another mission, I also was like, no, I, I'm not good enough anymore. Like there's a reason the Lord <laughs> calls, you know, young people to serve for two or one and a half years. And then he comes, he brings them home and he sends new people out because like, like we said earlier, it's the Lord's work he knows who he is sending at what time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I testify to what my former companion teacher says. Um, yeah, just as, as a teacher, um, I just realized everything I did wrong <laughs> as a missionary. And um, I think that's just how life works um, because after I was done being a teacher and now I'm training the teachers, now I realize everything I did wrong as a teacher, you know, and <laughs> I'm just like, well, I would be such, I would be such a great teacher now if I could go back, you know, and as a teacher, I was like, I would be such a better missionary if I w could go back now. And I was thinking about it the other day and I'm just like, you know, I'm honestly not sure that I would be, but what the difference might be is I would know that I'm not good. <laughs> you know? Whereas, you know, as a missionary, I probably thought I was great, you know? Um, so I, I, I agree with Kristen. I think it's just the 
I think lots of it is definitely the Lord where he says, you know, we need to teach missionaries better than you were, right? And one of the challenges about being an MC teacher is that you're training missionaries in ways to do missionary work that you never did as a, as a missionary. Um, and, you know, you think it's get home and just teach them what you did, but it's not. It's get home and teach them the new and better way to be a missionary. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a challenge, but it's also a blessing that we get to be part of that um, and to feel the Lord teach through you that way. Um, and, and you get those insights as you go. Thank you. That was awesome. I can go next because I haven't talked too much. <laughs> but um, I'm that companion this time. <laughs> <laughs> but being since I didn't go to the MTC before I went to the Philippines, um, it was very different for me. I had the like 13 day experience in the MTC that's when I went out was when they were pounding out those English speaking missionaries super, super quick. And I didn't get it. Like, I remember just teaching my teacher over and over again. Um, And then when I got to the Philippines, I realized now that I was pretty much useless for the first half of my time in the Philippines. I couldn't say anything. Okay. Not useless, but like, I didn't, I didn't learn to get a handle of the language until like my fifth transfer there. And um, something cool that I, I realized as a teacher was not just with the language, like language was a big part because I felt really excited about that one because that was something that I you know, worked so hard on. Um, but also with teaching skills was learning to be generous with the things that I've learned because I feel at least sometimes um, it can be easy to like hoard knowledge or be selfish and stingy with it because you worked so hard and you struggled so much to get it. You know, you made so many mistakes and, you know, went through so many weeks of, you know, less effective missionariness that it can kind of be, you know, seem unfair to yourself to like give these brand new missionaries that kind of experience and knowledge and tips and stuff. And it was fun just being a teacher and like slowly like starting to shed that, you know, Like, you know, if you can be where I was at when I left, like, Mm. you know, I think, I think we've mentioned that before. Like if we can send missionaries out at a level that we were at when we came home, like how much further they could go and how much more people they could touch. And I think that was just a really cool part of being a teacher um, was being able to feel like you could just kind of send out something greater than you ever were, you know, Mm. and just be excited for everything that they get to do rather than jealous i i guess just you know amen to everything they have said right um i and literally what they have said um but i I also want to add on uh i think what's what was really cool about being an mtc teacher was um I feel like uh, it, being taught by missionaries, if not every day, right, almost every day, um, it was cool how my mindset changed where at first it was like, I'm the teacher, I'm teaching, right? But it was really cool um, when was, the, there was a point where I realized the missionaries you know, were also fulfilling their purpose with, with us the teachers and it was such a a reminder of um not to use my mission as my crutch and the mtc as my crutch um for for my ties to the gospel and it was i don't know it was it was just feel like i i felt lucky that i was in a position where i was reminded of that every single day by the mission and so you know it's hard after the mission and it was just really cool um, that uh, that that this job right was able to remind me every day of of the gospel and what I need to do just how I was teaching in my mission so 
Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you guys for sharing. Um, I feel like a lot of like what you guys are talking about is just kind of like the different perspectives you have on life. Especially with Brother Adamson, he was a missionary, a teacher, and now a supervisor. Like those are totally different perspectives, and because of that, he saw like what what he could have done better. But I think that it's like Brother Mariano said, instead of using it as a crutch, he uses it as like kind of an advantage. And with Brother Shumway, like, you know, sharing all the knowledge that we can is probably what's best for everyone, right? And not just keeping and hoarding it like some crazy person. But yeah, thank you all for sharing. That was, that was really great. I, it's really cool to like be able to reflect back on things like these with you guys and like through the technology we have. Like we're all, we're all so blessed to have all these amazing technology especially for missionary work obviously like a lot of it's online so we're all so blessed to have it um but i think that that might be it do you guys have any questions for for me um, most memorable moment of your mtc of my mtc like, like a moment that you remember <laughs> i remember there was this specific moment where we were learning this like, I'm just going to be completely honest. We were learning this dumb song, and I could not remember this dumb song to save the life of me, okay? And I was like, I, I am so upset at myself. I'm so upset. I'm, I'm, okay, no, sorry. I just, I just thought it was dumb because I could not remember it. It was a, probably a great song. It probably helped a ton of missionaries. I guarantee it. But for me, I could not remember it. It was, just like, tearing me down. I was like, man, I can't remember this. My companions are doing great. Look at me. I'm just failing everything, right? <laughs> I can't remember this dumb song, but anyways, going into the lesson, I was like kind of feeling down, like man, I couldn't remember that song. Now what am I gonna do? But going to this lesson, um, I just remember like there was things that I said in that lesson that I wanted to say, but like was scared I wouldn't remember it. But I was able to remember it, and I think it was because I was just in that moment. I was in that moment with the spirit, and the spirit was able to help me and give me like that gift of tongues and. It just kind of was like a confirmation to me that the Lord was behind the work and the Lord was there, going to be there to help me. And I think, honestly, not remembering that song was part of that experience. For me not to remember that and then be able to remember something, the lesson that I was worried that I wouldn't be able to remember was kind of like, this is like important and you will be able to remember these things as long as you put the work into it and the, the Holy Ghost will remind you of these things. So I think that was just a really awesome moment. And Sorry for calling your, your song dumb, but it helped. It, it really helped me in that moment. And for me, I think that was just a really cool experience. And I think in just in general, being in the MTC was amazing just because the spirit of the entire MTC was amazing. It was just, you I constantly felt the spirit. And it was kind of weird, like going out, you were kind of like, oh, wait, I thought the spirit was going to come with me. But that, now I'm kind of out in the world and I have to like do the things to keep the spirit with me mm-hmm. instead of that environment just being encompassed with the experience so that was just in general the mem to see in general is just an amazing experience so i thank you guys all for create making that an amazing experience because it, it wouldn't have been the same without you honestly so thank you yeah so what would you um since you went you went through the mtc years after us right, right? um so our mtc is way way more distant um Let's say uh, you have a friend who gets called to go to Ilo Ilo now. What would you tell them for, uh, I don't know, advice, survival tips for the MTC? What would you say? <laughs> well, I mean, I feel like it's different now from current MTC people because they are all online. Um, but I think the biggest thing is just to make sure you're spiritually prepared because everything else will come in the, in the end. Like, there's For me, like I wouldn't tell someone to be like, oh, yeah, go buy a long old, Book of Mormon and just read the heck out of that. I, I feel like that'd be the last thing I would tell them. I feel like for me, the biggest thing was, especially like finishing reading the Book of Mormon, that was a big thing before I went into MDC. That really helped me. And I think just spir- being spiritually prepared is way more important than any o- other aspects. Because that's just going to come in time. Like learning language, that'll come in time. It's not going to happen instantly. Um, no, learning how to teach, that comes through experiences as well. Um, so I would just tell them spiritually prepared, that can include like obviously reading the scriptures, but going, going to mission prep, I feel like is amazing. Actually, I taught mission prep for a while before I moved and that was a great experience in itself. So I'm kind of an advocate of mission prep now, <laughs> even though I didn't really go before my, before I went, <laughs> I did, I kind of regretted going every time I'd be like, Oh, this is the worst. It's just a lecture. <laughs> but when I was called to be the, the helper for the, empty, the, for the mission prep, I was like, all right, we're making this fun. Let's go. And so we, we made it fun. And it was a really good experience. But, yeah, I think that's the big thing, just being spiritually prepared. 
good advice. Any other questions from you guys? Who was your favorite teacher? <laughs> oh, snap. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Um, I mean, I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it. We can take it. I'll just leave the video now. I'll just leave now. I'm curious about your dynamic with your companions at the FTC. Because we had like... We were worried for you. We were worried for me? Me specifically or just us three in general? Yeah. <laughs> this is yeah. a read space. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> um, yeah, how, um, to us anyway, you seemed like you were having a tough time. Is that the right word to say? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. a struggle, honestly. Okay. Um, so the biggest yeah. things that were really uh, f frustrating for me, specifically in our companionship, not like any outside problems, but in our companionship specifically, like it was just so frustrating that we weren't able to plan effectively. like. For me, I was like really like intense. I was like, I gotta, I gotta know what I'm gonna do. I gotta, I gotta know what I'm gonna teach. And these guys are like, Yeah, we'll just, you know, write that on the board. It'll be do, just do that thing. That'll be good. And then just like, Elliot's on drawing like some tank on the board. I'm like, What are you doing? We're just trying to plan here. <laughs> and honestly, that was like a big part of our comp inventory was talking about planning and just like how we're gonna do better at that. So that was the big part of what we were doing because that was what was really stressing me out on the FTC was not planning. And so, in getting in the mission field and having a ton of companions that were really good at planning, that was awesome. I, lo I loved every minute of planning after that. Um, sometimes it was kind of, it was kind of like, ah, oh, gotta do more planning. But at the same time, I think back to MTC and like, remember that? I'm like, oh yeah, okay, never mind, we're good, let's go. <laughs> um, but other than that, it, we were really good friends, honestly. Like all of us were really good friends. Um, other LDA, we we went to the same mission, obviously, and I remember we were we didn't see each other for like the longest time. And then he was the one that was giving us some shot that we needed to get. And mm. I remember hearing his military voice, like, telling people to do stuff. And I was like, oh, I know that voice. And I, like, ran. I'm like, Elder Elliot! And, like, we, like, go up. We, like, give a big hug. And it was, it was an amazing experience just to see him. Because I was never able to see him. And it was sad, though, because I was going to be his zone leader. And then when I transferred in, that's that's the same time that he was, he was sent home. So, unfortunately, that <laughs> happened. But, um... He's doing great now. He's in the military and stuff. So, I little done. I talked to him a little bit too. He's doing good. Um, I wasn't able to talk much about his mission, but I think yeah, we had we had generally it was a really good experience. Generally, it was a really good companionship. It was just the planning. That that was the biggest thing. <laughs> good. Glad to hear. It's cool to see like that side because we only have our side. Right. Right. Only, like... <laughs> right. Yeah. You don't. You guys aren't there on the flies on the wall in our little apartment, just like hearing what we're talking about. So. <laughs> it's totally different just in the classroom wouldn't want to be right obviously i'm just saying like <laughs> in the classroom we're probably different than you know <laughs> outside but, but yeah we, we were really good though we were good it's kind of funny though i ran in i don't remember if you remember elder meyer he was our sabano like guy that was with yeah. us yeah so i yeah, actually bumped himself i bumped into him at work like a few weeks ago or last month i think but yeah, I bumped into work and I was like, Elder Meyer! And he's like, I don't remember your name, but hey. <laughs> it was kind of funny. <laughs> but yeah. That's funny. That's kind of the one uh, upside to being here is just there's so many like people from my mission, people just I know from just the church in general. So it's kind of a great place to be <laughs> here in Orm slash Provo. Definitely. But yeah, favorite teacher. Um... <laughs> just kidding you guys were all great and you guys all had your great like different strengths and different weaknesses obviously but i think you're all like you all had your own things but coming together you made like this amazing team to help all of us so i think as a whole you guys were all my favorite teachers so, so. it was it was mainly a joke because i feel like anytime <laughs> like a district would like get one of us alone and yeah. they would ask a question That's it was so always true. who's your favorite district and it's like <laughs> <laughs> yep yep yeah. us missionaries are always like that <laughs> a little bit of their own medicine right there yeah i'm feeling it right now oh man that was such a hard that was so hard that question man 
<laughs> we will say. I feel like. I feel like it. It's not. I feel like it, it's not too prideful to say this, but like, I feel like all four of us we had like chemistry as a teacher because I feel like we did work hard, um, yeah. and I and it was cool because um, we we were um, in sync. It was cool to be able to work together. So, and I don't know. It was just it was just a, a fun time. Like some, it didn't really feel like work. You know, it was, yeah, yeah, it yeah. Was fun. I will say yeah, it definitely. was it was kind of funny whenever Brother Shemway and other Brother Mariano were together, it felt like more of like a chill, like oh this is gonna be cool, we're gonna have some fun. <laughs> and then whenever Brother Adams and Sister Reed were together, it was like okay guys, we're gonna learn some stuff today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I think it worked out though, because it was like. You can't always be like super intense, you know. You have to have some days where you're like kind of like, all right, we're gonna learn some things, and some days are like, okay, we're gonna learn some things, guys. Come on, all right. <laughs> so it was good. It was really good dynamic, like like as you said. So. Uh yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Sometimes you you that district was something else. It was. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> Very memorable. Yeah, so. for sure. I feel like if I was in like in a normal district of like twenty plus people, I feel like we wouldn't be able to have the same conversation, honestly. So, I'm glad we had the experience we did. Yeah. 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 And if you talk to Elder Elliot and Elder again, tell him we say hi. Yeah, for sure. I'm hoping to do like the same thing, but with like my MTC companions. So we'll see what happens. Oh, that'll be interesting. That'll be cool. Yeah, send us the send us the result. Okay. I'm interested to see what they say about me. <laughs> about you specifically. All right. Let me make a note of that. Hold on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Not gonna lie, there were times where I was like kind of scared to talk to Elder Elliot because he just looked so like. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> yeah, he was very oh. serious. He very very serious. <laughs> But so nice, though. Yeah, it's the thing. Like, once you get to know him, he's like, oh, he's super cool. Yeah. He just has an outside, like, military look to him, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah. But, yeah, I think that's all of my questions. Any more questions from you guys? No, but thanks for the opportunity. It was kind of fun to relive the glory days. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Yeah. And it's good to see Kenner. Like I said, yeah, yeah, it's always good to yeah. see Kenner. Too, too long. <laughs> I mean, it's good to see the other two as well. But, yeah. <laughs> you haven't mentioned me yet. Hello, I'm the one who invited you. And you. And, oh, okay. Hey, of course. All right, that thanks. Given. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, thank you guys so much. Um, I mean, I thought it would be appropriate if I was a bear to my testimony of Lungo, just to kind of hear you, Maya Lungo now. Um, it's probably not perfect, but I'll give it a shot. Pero kapalo ako nga tuod tuod kaya yung ining asimbahan tuod kaya yung yung at aton nga evangelin ng Kristo kag palang ako siya sa Kristo kung siya ang ako aton nga maluluwas kag tungod sa iya mayar kita yung yung pagbaya sa la kag sempre sa ining a bulan naman at yung December kag kasarbe kita yung iya nga yung birth sempre yung pagkatao kag tungod sa iya ger ara kita tanan ara kita kag ara yung evangelyo niya ara yung pagkinos para sa aton kag tamo tamo mga mga bugay mga mga maragro ara ara para sa aton so kapasalama ako ger para sa tanan tanan kapasalama ako para sa inyo tanan kag kapalo ako ng ininga evangelyo tuod ger kag ininga ininga testimony gusto ko ibeling sa pangarap ni Kristo amen Amen. 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 <laughs> Thank you so much. Ah, <laughs> Sige, salamat kid. Halong, happy new year. Halong, <laughs>